Hey. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the fourth there. time we've ran the opening, so we're, we're waiting to see if anybody actually. I was worried if I maintained that level of enthusiasm <laughs> every single time you guys would start, start to think I was a phony. So. Would really ha- realize how disingenuous it is. So you're, you're, that is fourth take that you're getting there. So yeah, that's that's our fourth take energy level. That you're seeing. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the uh, Patch Game Club Book Club. What are we calling it? We only say book. When I you're want to here. call it a relaxing lounging hour with uh, Ryan. Yeah, no, this is uh, <laughs> really without Meg. You're my co- chair this time, so I'm just uh, <laughs> you're completely laid out. <laughs> Open up to camera. There we go. Um, so this week we are playing um, Brothers: A Tale of Two Sons, mm-hmm. uh, which is a game that came out in 2013 from Starbreeze. Which great interest- game. Interestingly enough, uh, I was just looking up the like the other games they've done. Uh, <clears throat> Payday 2. <laughs> no, really? Yeah, they did Payday 2. Oh, yeah. No, I can totally um, see notes of uh, Payday 2 <laughs> and uh, Brothers. Syndicate, Chronicles of Riddick, Assault on Dark Athena. We were talking oh, wow, about yeah. at Chronicles of Riddick a few minutes ago, actually. Sure. Like, a whole bunch of different stuff. And then, right in, in all that, Brothers. A Tale of Two Sides. Right, really? so. Where's the company based? Um, The company's based in Sweden, in Stockholm. Okay. Because yeah. uh, I get a feeling while we talk about this, we're going to draw a lot of comparisons to Limbo, which is a game that we talked about previously. It's a, It's... This one was made in Sweden, the other or and Limbo was made in I think Denmark. It's Danish. Yeah, it's yeah. Danish. It was made in Denmark. Is that a Nordic country? Those two Nordic countries, uh, Sweden and yeah, Denmark? Sweden definitely d- Denmark. I think they're like you know mm, close. <laughs> yeah, no, this, is, this is the international symbol for Nordic right there. Mm, yeah, I mean they're all. I mean all of that is within a few hundred miles, but you know it's. The but, whole Europe zone. And there's a lot of other comparisons we could draw. I do want to say, though, brag about something, which is after we did the Game Club for Limbo, I then went on the Rooster Teeth Twitch account and streamed trying to break the achievement for five deaths uh-huh. in one run all the way through. Less it took than me, five deaths, oh. yeah. It took me two nights to get that done. I had to get l- five. It's very important to note this. It's five deaths or less. And that's, yes. that becomes so very important. You can, you can get five deaths. Five is the limit. Yeah, and you, we talked about Limbo last yeah. time, but that last jump, uh-huh. it's like I had one death going into that, but I died not on that one, but the one right before it. So then I had, like, <laughs> I had to get it perfect. So it was like this awesome like moment of just like tension and it was like, couldn't have wrote it any better. Oh, Did it you was, take it the was really intense. What's the shortcut? You know, you can, well, there's that whole dark level that you can go through that cuts you from like 27 to 34 a chapter or something like that. I, I forget the numbers exactly. No, I did not do that. Okay. I had to get that achievement though to 100% the game. I don't know that that's easier. It does cut off a couple levels, I guess, but. No, oh, he, no. That he, dark level. He went the hard tough. way. That, that dark, Which one's the hard way? But that dark level, Do you're like in yeah. total blackness, just jumping over saw blades oh, based sound, on sound. Yeah, yeah, that's a, no way. That's not I a mean, shortcut. The puzzles weren't that bad. It was okay. Here's a saw. All right, yeah, but when you're saw. when you're like, right. I don't have any deaths to spare. That that is true. That saw. Yeah, is yeah. Very it's a risky important. risky move on that. Trial and error is fine yeah. when you can let the kid get sawed in half a thousand <laughs> times or Which, his eyes pop out. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but right, enough so about brothers. Like, yeah, but going back to brothers, which was. Um, it's a, it does have a lot of similarities. I feel it's it's short. Um, I played through it in one, maybe three and a half hour sitting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, this is my second time actually playing it. Um, I saw you play it back when it first came out, uh, and then I had to go away because I was like I didn't want to. I didn't want spoilers. And then mm-hmm. I sat down and played it myself. Back when we first started the patch, we would have a game on. At like I tried to have a game on to play mm-hmm. every week, and oh, I think yeah, Brothers yeah. was one of those games that we I played that. one week. Uh, and it, it was actually my choice for game of the year, downloadable game of the year, which I think that year went to Blood Dragon, I think, that year. That, that sounds familiar, yeah. I like that we don't remember the game. I just don't remember what year it was. Yeah. Years, it's their year, good. Year, two years ago. Two but years I was ago. really pushing hard for Brothers to be game of the year, downloadable game of the year. I can see why, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a top-down puzzler, uh, 3D. Well, I, um, isometric-ish, right? But it's like yeah. 3D isometric. Yeah. How long did it take you to figure out how to work your thumbs independently? You know what? Here's the thing is um, I... What I end up doing is cheating it, basically, where cheater. I just make sure that I... No, no, no. I just make sure that I have the you little... You called yourself a cheater. <laughs> like, I ended no, up being a cheater. I mean, no, cheater. no. I mean, no, I mean, no, wait. No. Look, how, da- how dare harsh you? Harsh language. <laughs> hey, as someone who's, like, done stuff on stage before, you know, like, cheat to the audience, right? I just oh, mean, okay. like, in terms of... I keep the little brother, because mm-hmm. he's controlled with the right thumbstick. I try to yep. keep him on the right side of the screen. Oh, yeah. And I try and keep the big brother on the left side of the screen, so that with only a few exceptions where you don't have... Mm-hmm. Like a choice. You should probably explain I the can, control scheme, scheme, scheme right, to right, people right. who haven't so played the game. That is actually the control scheme is one of the most important parts of this game Very where um, you are controlling uh, two characters at once and each character is controlled by one side of the controller. So the um, the right trigger and right thumbstick controls the little brother and the uh, left uh, 
left trigger, left thumbstick control is the big brother. And right. so you end up having to navigate both of them through these levels, and it requires them to sometimes separate and coordinate. Someone will go pull a lever. Sometimes only the older brother can do this one thing, whereas the little brother is small, so only right. he can fit between bars. And so you have to sort of work the two of them through all these different levels. And it's it's... I mean, it looks, when you look at it, you're like, oh, yeah, that's, you know, makes total sense. <laughs> but then you go to do it, and you, the second they get on the on the wrong sides of each other, they're, like, running into walls, just, like, just like <laughs> walking into absolutely nothing. And I'm like, why are you, I'm not, oh, yeah. I actually tried something after I played through it the first time where I took our two boys, JD uh -huh. and Teddy, who actually are very similar to the kids mm -hmm. in the game. It's Which eerily similar. Which, in some similar. ways, just makes the game, like, hit that much harder. Yes. The other thing is that this is a, a game that's heavily story driven and tells a really great story. I think I mean, it's it same thing we said about sad. Limbo. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's for, fair warning. It starts it off sad immediately. And just goes, <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah. The game starts with your mom drowning in front of you. Right. right. That's that's point one of game is mom dies in front of you. That's yeah. that's prologue. And we, we <laughs> should note just for those who maybe haven't seen this show before, this is a full spoiler show. We oh, yeah. will discuss the ending of this game. So yeah. uh, pause for three and a half hours, <laughs> go play the game, come back, it's worth it. Your mom dies at the, in, in the front of intro you. cinematic. In front of the younger brother. In front of the little brother. Which yeah. is important because he then has a fear of swimming. Right. right. Or a very, you know, water issues. That and then continue. dad gets sick in, uh -huh. the, in the first level. That's basically what starts the game off. Yeah, so then you, um, the, the two gets brothers. shot in a loading screen. <laughs> <laughs> then the two brothers have to go and try, they have to go to like, I assume it's the world tree. That's mm -hmm. what That's I what got. That's what I thought too. Yeah, there's um, no English it, in it. It's, it's all, it's, 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 yeah, it's kind of similish, mm -hmm. but so they have a name. So the little brother is what, like, me? And the older brother is like, Naya? Something like that. They're they're still kind of similar. I figured out those seem to be their names, but that's mm -hmm. all they say. All they're right. like they're like Pokemon. What I tried to do for an experiment is mm -hmm. I gave the controller to JD and Teddy, and they each had to run one thumbstick in one side of it. So they had to play uh -huh. the little brother and the older brother with just their. They, that lasted, I think, for like two or three levels. I and actually, yeah, the Eli and I played well for a little while. Thankfully, uh, as the game got progressively very dark. Right when it really went bad, you really have a tone shift where you have this one night, then all of a sudden wolves are attacking you out of the dark. And that's mm -hmm. where uh, I didn't play any further than that with Eli. But yeah, so for the first part of the game, it was I was doing the, the older brother and Eli was doing the younger brother. Uh, that I mean, went pretty well. Ash, you played it on PC. You played it on 360, I I played see. it on yeah. PS3 because it was okay. uh, a free game on PSN a few months ago. Yeah, and yeah. It, I played it on Xbox 360. It might have gone... Games with gold at some point. I, Those always I lag it, a little bit. I think it was at some point. I'll look it up really quick. Um, what were the control scheme though? Because I watched you. You played it with the Xbox One controller hooked into a PC. I did. But what are the control schemes if you don't have that? That's a great question. I wondered that. I, I, it may me. require a controller. I, it might. I mean, I can't I, imagine trying to direct it with. I guess like you could do two it with just, WASD yeah. configurations. Yeah, I'm not. I wasn't up, even give up on that fast. I wasn't even going to begin to mess with that. The mm -hmm. fact that like it's got controller support, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> not even going to try I'm it. I'm curious to try it, though. It's a lot like Limbo 2 in the sense that they show you a simple mechanic. You, it's very easy to figure it out. And then the progression of that, that mechanic mm -hmm. is so nuanced and so well-paced. Oh. It's great. Like We talk mm -hmm. about like you use one thumbstick to control one brother, another thumb, thumbstick to control the other. By the end of the game, you're like swinging on ropes mm -hmm. back and forth with each other. And you have to... like. It's it's really like complicated, that's, too, and that's, yeah. that's not even that's like um it's probably like just past halfway maybe, but like that mm -hmm. part like the giants, the like giant in, tower, in the giant yeah. tower, right? Yeah, yeah, that part is the first time I played that. That really got me because the the brothers would be on the wrong side this time. <laughs> nailed it. No, no, no problem problems at all. Yeah, so you have to like you have to like swing from one to the other, mm -hmm. and then remember like they've switched sides, which means that you, you don't get to just go by the screen. You have to swing them up. Then someone has to like climb or drop down. It's just whenever you play a game like that where it has a really weird or different control scheme, you almost kind of feel like your brain's building new connections as you do it. I get that feeling. Yeah, but, I, I can tell you that playing Brothers came in handy when the Wii U came out, and it came. There was Nintendo Land. I mm -hmm. think it has a game type. Where you have to control two different characters with the different thumbsticks, mm -hmm. I just destroyed everybody <laughs> at that game. I was so good at it because I would do this thing where I'd like you basically like make a big wide net and then come around and just mm -hmm. catch everybody, and they're like picking up little globes or something. You know, oh Nintendo yeah, that's the, that was like the Animal Crossing mini game. It was. Thing, it was the Animal like Crossing mini one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I felt. You know what's the? I don't think the puzzles in this particular game in Brothers were that difficult. No. Because they must have just made allowances for how much you're already wrapping your brain around. That's a good like point. Like none yeah. of the puzzles, it's like none of them. You you don't get to them and go. Mm, mm, mm. 
like you might you look at it for a second, you go, ah, and then you just have to then you have to be able to do it. Yeah. And then also when you make enough progress and you're really proud of yourself, then it's like, now you're sad. <laughs> now here, yeah. look at this. Oh be sad about this. There's a lot of there's a lot of death in that game. Oh it's dark. man, yeah. It's right past that whole campsite issue. Then you run into the giant murder fields mm -hmm. where there's just dead giants all over the place and you're I, pushing we, them out of the way and there's the one you shoot in the head with a crossbow. He's mm -hmm. already dead, but you're just moving his body like, eh, well, let's just shoot him in the head one more time. Yeah. Can't really hurt at this point. I yeah. love the giant's graveyard. Morally, that's clean. <laughs> it's like you're Fine. like you're like wandering up a guy and then you yeah, you have to like lose a thing that will cut off this arm so uh -huh. you can continue down the river of blood. I really wanted to know, that's one of those great things about this game. And any game that takes on the, the challenge of telling a story without telling you anything. Yes. Uh, is It's ambitious, and if you do it right, it's really cool. And this one in particular really left me wanting to know, what was that all about? Like, why? I just walked through yep. a war. Uh, and I know nothing about it or right. why mm -hmm. it even happened. Were, are they really big or are you really tiny? I was going to ask that too, yeah. Are, are we Lilliputians or is it uh, just a world of giants? I mean, I'm assuming that I'm assuming they're giants because, like, goats are still goat-sized, and they're fun to ride, by they the way. Are. And, the, like, the, the trolls were troll-sized. It's just Trees. that they were really, really, really big. Did you ride on the back of an owl at one point? You do? do you, now, yeah. it, do you think it's an owl or a griffin? Because it's like an owl, but it has it's four legs. It's their take on it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if there's, like, a standard for those, but... A, a, a standard of weight and measures for uh, griffins? Like, or? does it have to be a hawk's head with a lion's body? Or we need the ornithological body? society or of this also... world to contact us exactly. and let us know. Or like, this one what's the difference between a and a hippogriff? Hippogriff? Hippog it was kind of a... Hippogriff is part horse. Yeah. Because hippo, oh, okay. hippo means horse. Um, like, a hippodrome is where they go to raise horses. So, so. What, what's a hippo? Hippo. I think they would be, like, half bird, half... They might actually be a hippogriff is what that might be. I'm going to look it up. It's okay. A, here we go. Um, it's a half griff, half hippo. Yeah, but do you... It's interesting, like, you go through this whole thing, and as sad as the story is and as much terrible stuff as there is, you also do a lot of good. You do. Which is nice. Like, you have a really positive impact on a lot of Unfortunately. lives. Unfortunately. Uh, before things go dark. Although there's some of it, it's like you can't do much. Like, there's, I really like the, um, the, 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 the troll couples. Uh-huh. That, that's super cute. Like, he's, like, so sad, and he's sitting at a table all by himself. And you know immediately. Yeah. You see him sitting at a table all by himself. There's no lady troll there, and he's really sad. And you know immediately something's happened to lady troll, and you feel terrible, but he helps you out anyway. Uh, they do a great job, too, of artistically separating the friendly troll. You kind of come mm -hmm. upon him, mm -hmm. and you never know when yep. something's bigger than you. It's like, is this a, a threat or not? And he is clearly not. And then later on, you meet a not friendly troll, and the, the style differences between them make it so obvious. Like, oh, that guy's the one I don't want to meet in a dark yeah. alley. That guy, I have no problem dropping down a hole. Yeah. We'll just burn him right up. Yeah. A hippogriff is a mythical creature with the body of a horse and the wings and the head of an eagle. So, actually, I think that's their take on a hippogriff is okay. what that is. Okay. So. All right, cool. An owl-a-griff. Either way, it was really nice. Like, mm -hmm. the hippogriff, that's another one that you save. You do. It comes back well, and helps you. It, is, is, is it, it the, the same, same one? Thing? Oh. I thought it was. Because it dies. It dies. You oh. land. Remember, so you, you rescue him and... He's all in. He's all covered in blood. I don't know why he's covered in blood because it seems like whatever tr giant was in that castle just really liked pet well, hippogriffs because it had were like pictures on the wall, which I assume right, meant that, I that it was experimenting was, on it. Like, oh, see, I, I assume that meant he was drawing them, like he was just a really you know big, uh -huh. tiny hippogriff <laughs> big fan. fan, and I didn't know like what the deal, like why it was injured in the cage. It looked almost medical to me. I thought he was kind of like experimenting on it. Okay. See, can I tell you something? Too? Just listening to you guys discuss the story of brothers is that's what I like about it, because it's your interpretation of it. And I think a lot of times with story-driven games, the new thing is like interactive. I got to use Telltale as an example, where it's literally just a different experience. Or Mass Effect, where it's like, if I sit down and I talk to you about Mass Effect, the Mass Effect you played is entirely different than what Ashley played and what I played. It's literally a different game. But I think it's a lot cooler to have a game where you guys ran into the same thing, there's no explanation for it, so your imagination, you mm -hmm. get to fill in the gaps, and your interpretation of it is what makes it interesting and unique. It's not a difference of choice, it's a difference of perception. Right, it's not a difference mm -hmm. even of presentation, even. Uh -huh. It's just your interpretation mm -hmm. of that presentation. Yeah, so do we think it's the same one? Because he, you, he, he, you, you escape on him, yeah. you escape out of the giant's tower, he gets you down safely, and then, I mean, as far as I could tell, it full-on died. It looked like it full-on died. If so, it didn't full on die, then we just walked away from it, it and left part, it there. Right, which, 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 which sucks a lot. But on the other hand, if it's if that was a different hippogriff that came at the end, why you haven't done him any favors? He owes you nothing. The strange hippogriff, strange hippogriff just lands, and what you're gonna get on it? 
Maybe hey, it's a pay it forward kind of a thing. It's a friend. Yeah, no, they they found out what you did for the other one. You know, somehow. so like it, it makes more sense almost that that's like he's like he he rested, he got his strength back. He was just napping. It's the one thing in the game that doesn't die. <laughs> he even got a shower, washed all the blood off. <laughs> Sun rises, hits him, he's fine. It's just he regenerates. No that's, big deal. That's what I like to think. Cause I like it was. So I sad. felt it was he, the exact same he, one. He he dies and he's like and he's just like. <laughs> I want one less death in the game. And then you pull, that would be nice. Then you pull off his wings and fly away with them. No, that's limbo. <laughs> but um, I was uh, I was going to say that another comparison you make to Limbo is that the, from the achievements of this game, none of the achievements are based on you playing the game, like completing the storyline. They're all like additional things you have to yeah. do, mm -hmm. which is actually one of the first moments of like darkness in the game is one of the achievements is you take a ball away from a girl and throw it down a well, you know? <laughs> and it's like, oh, what, <laughs> what is that? Why do they make you do that? Right, it's, the, it's like the only achievement really that's mean, like that, like, uh -huh. there's a lot of achievements in that beginning uh, area. One of them, you go back and you skip stones because you end up, like, that's a callback at the very, very end of the game. Oh, okay. Um, and then you, there's a couple in, That bird like, one it, stinks. That bird one. That bird also, one. when we have to, like, watch a star. Oh, the shooting the, star yeah, in the graveyard? By the, by the graveyard. Yeah, See, so, I missed a lot of that stuff because yeah, you wouldn't need it. That's, that's, I didn't, didn't, didn't look at it, the trophies because I was on PlayStation, so I didn't even bother seeing what the optional stuff yep. was. Yeah, they're they're all optional. There's nothing that's plot based. There's one you have to do in like chapter two oh. and then set it up for chapter seven. So really? It's, yeah. So by the time you get to it, if you haven't done this thing with a bird, mm -hmm. you can't do the thing later. You it's, know, you know, later when you're the on the most missed achievement, you're in that elevated world with the the like the with the crazy dude? that go between everything. And the inventor's there. Yes. And yeah, he has a telescope. Yeah, yeah. There's a bird you can see through the telescope. And if you set a bird free earlier in the game, oh, like you know, at the, like the, like at the beginning. This is like chapters and chapters ago. So you can't go back. That's the only thing that makes me think that maybe the hippogriff at the end was not the same one, because they do set up this pairing and like the brothers are a pair, you know, the parents are a pair, mm. and like a lot of the tropes troll and everything like that. And even the bird, like you trying to set up the bird with somebody mm -hmm. else, there's so much pairing in the game that maybe the, the hippogriff is like the hippogriff's wife or husband or something like that. No, it's the one. Because they're snuggling out of mutual loss. Because he does a lot of hugging it out right there. That'd have been super dark if it was like the wife of the dead hippogriff. It comes, lands. You get on it, flies away, and then it just goes, yump. <laughs> it's like a vengeance story <laughs> at the end of the whole thing. But man, it gets really. The, the Should we talk about gets, the sad elephant in the room? It gets really oh, tough. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, assuming this is a big spoiler, we assuming you play, to. played the game. Yeah. yeah. At this point, if you haven't played the game, just please, just just play it. It's it's really worth it. I feel less sad drinking a coke. Um, but, I feel like I'm just like, <laughs> but, oh, yeah, it's super sad. Gulp, gulp. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. So the one thing that this game has made me really, really want is like a new game plus immortality, where you can <laughs> where you can go back through and like play it. Knowing what you know, and kill that bitch. <laughs> yeah. Leave, leave her. Leave. Her. So you you find this girl, this innocent girl being sacrificed by in the forest. I want to point out. No, yeah. not in the forest. She's in like she's in. Remember, she's, she's in like the tree, that. Like right? the no, the, the the cultists are about yes, to like sacrifice. Oh right. And I love the right. fact that like later on you can right. be like. The cultists were good guys. <laughs> they were doing well, a good thing. Well, they were sacrificing some kind of blood god, so... Uh, Still good guys when it comes to her. That doesn't make them good guys. That just maybe makes them different kind of bad guys. I will take differently bad in this case. Committed bad guys. <laughs> they're, very, um, they're very faithful. Yeah, so you, Frolicking we find this... a river of giant blood. But so. if you've read any fairy tale, if you meet anyone out and about, they're always going to be bad news. They're always going to be bad. No, when you rescue the damsel, it's supposed to be nice. Not nah, necessarily. She kissed him. She did. She's she kissing, kissing, like also, they're, she they're did. hugging, and she does help a lot, actually, in the in the she city, um, the the village that's been frozen. Which, by the way, is super morbid. Like w when you push the siege engine down through a a crowd of popsicle people. Well, do, were those people, or were they just like I snowmen were, to trick the giant invisible guy? No, see, I got the feeling that they were. There had been like there was a war on. And there were a bunch of people attacking the town. I felt like they were decoys too. Maybe they had limbo and then on the brain. This, and I thought that this monster came up and just froze everybody where they stood. I think they were all the hippogriff. <laughs> Probably. That's how he regenerates himself. Um, no, I, I got the she, same feeling. I got the feeling they were decoys too. Mm -hmm. But I think I was thinking about limbo with the fake spider. Like, okay. it's their way of coping with it. There Maybe that's couple, where I got it. But I had the same interpretation. There that you are did. actually a couple of, uh, of demis in limbo. Because remember, there's also the one that like falls and hangs. Uh huh. Right. Um, as or before you run into the boys for the first time, the ones that keep trying to kill you. Uh -huh. Yeah. They're like, there's someone drops down, and I think that's a dummy. 
Okay. So there's like there's a you know there's maybe he's just the dumbest lost that. boy. Can I some of your coffee? Can I take my, <laughs> you before, does that make you sad? Will that make you I, sad? I brought myself uh, coffee and a coke because I, I like drinking coffee and coke at the same time. And I walked up with it, and Ashley goes, "Oh, is that coffee for me?" And I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> here it is. And Patrick Salazar was here doing the mics, and he goes like this. He looks at me like this. He goes. <laughs> was like, yeah, that wasn't that wasn't real. Right, it, it was an audible I pulled. But uh, she kind of mm. gives herself away though, because she jumps across that. She is, she's a little superhuman. Outs herself as super strong. You're like, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. At first, she's she's That's like different. leaping these enormous gaps and all. Another warning like, sign. Wow. All the warning signs were there. If all of you could there. go back. Anyway, well, she also, turns into a giant sti- a spider, stab. right? Right. And uh, so she, just stabs the crap out yeah. of the older brother. Spiders, another recurring thing. Yeah. Despite, you you pull all of her legs off. Yeah. That was the very, day, yeah. The day is one. And then she gets one of her like little like her little like T-Rex legs and goes. That yeah. was greedy too, right? She was done. Yeah. She was done. Just like get when away she from got her to three point. legs, she was barely hopping yeah, around. Like at that point, like she wasn't jumping up. There was uh, nothing. Nope. She was just Could've like. Could have left. Could have left. Should have left. Yeah, should have left. Hubris. Yeah, so, <laughs> it's gonna get you every time. Boy. But yeah, that's, that's like pride, fucking with you. That's well, what it is. Or, Marcellus Wallace's famous words. Or just don't take off with this with suspiciously helpful hot chick when you're supposed to getting be Look, getting medicine for your dad. Let's all that's agree that also, that's not the lesson. You should always take off with suspicious hot chicks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, she, you are on a mission to help your dying dad back home. Your only parent that you have she left. She said and, she knew where the stuff was. Right, and then she was, and then she's like, she would she's go into the little cave, and and the little brother's like, no, we need to go, and the older brother's like, nah. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, then, that was kind of weird. He, so he gets stabbed, and the little brother has to go to the tree. The little brother, not only that, has to drag his brother to the tree. Brother right. makes right. it for a while. He doesn't he, just go down. Right, yep. but then they then they fall down an avalanche, which just mm-hmm. makes it worse. I mean, look, you've got, like, a big stab wound from a giant club. It was probably poisoned. Look, I know that spider legs aren't normally poisoned. That bitch, I bet it was poisoned. She was pretty freaky. allow the creative liberty. Yeah. She is a spider person. So She's a maybe spider person. Maybe. So you drag your brother to the foot of the tree. He makes it to the foot of the tree. Still alive. Which is really, you know, it's like yeah. you finally made it to Gaia. And you then I was it. having He's this alive. total uh, Last Crusade moment where I'm like, okay, I'm going to get the magic juice. I'm just going to pour it all over. Got it's it. all going to be fine. Right. Everything's going to be great. Well, I was actually, the, the first time I played it, I got really concerned that it was going to be one of those scenarios where there's enough for one and you mm-hmm. have to choose mm-hmm. whether to give it to your brother or to your dad. Who do you choose in that? You just go with younger, right? I, I got to go with brother just because, well, again, dad... I, they never really speak necessarily to the severity of the dad. Maybe he would have pulled through. You know, I'm assuming if they went on this thing. Yeah, giant hole in your stomach though is pretty much guaranteed. You're not going to walk home. Probably right. Like not. maybe, like maybe dad could just make it a little bit longer enough for Gaia Juice to grow back. Yeah, make a second run. Yeah. You got to ride back. Right. You got like you got hippogriff buddies now. You know that's that, whole I mean, herd of them. That goes back to like the Hobbit too. Yeah. You think like when the eagles show up, you're like. How much easier would this have been if you just showed up in like Act One? We could have just like the taken the ring and all the way. it over into the, in the volcano, like in a, in a flyover. But yeah, we'd have been yeah. fine. But he gets you all the way home very conveniently at the end. So, did either of you desperately hope as you were not only okay? So your brother dies. You try the juice. Nothing happens. And then no. And then, then you have to. You Bury, bury him. him. Yeah. Oh my God. I started drag at the him foot. Into the grave too, like I went. Yeah, you have to drag him into his grave. Then there's four piles of dirt. I, I did the two foot ones first, and hoping that maybe he would. Like, like I didn't that. want to like push it on his face, just in case right. it was like the juice worked. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> juice didn't work. Nope. It's like the fact that they make you do that. This isn't mm-hmm. a cinematic you watch. You have to go and you have to. Like get your brother and drag him into a grave. The little and then, brother has dragged the big brother. Yep. So and then, it's even like and, tough. Oh yeah. And then push the drum. I'm like I was sitting there, like the, I was playing it again, even knowing all of that uh-huh. was coming. I was like, <laughs> I'm getting. I'm getting where's my? Okay. It was rough. <laughs> there we go. Here. You know, I'll tell you the the tough part for me was when after he buries him, and then the hippogriff comes out of nowhere and just lands, and you're like, mm-hmm. oh, I guess I'm right. mistaken. Yes. But there's like this pause that they even put in there with like little brothers, like look at it. It's like I realize like how far from home. The brother is buried now. He's never coming back here. He's not going through all that stuff yeah. to come visit his brother's well, grave. Well, he might probably. now. He's got hippogriff herd. Well, oh yeah, he's got a hippogriff friend. Now he's got the shortcut. That's a one-time use, though. You don't know that. No, well, that's know. it's paid back. It's You're rules of the hippogriff. At that point. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, look, you killed my Even husband. Steven. I'll give you a ride home. Then that's it. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go no contact. I don't want to deal with the emotions of knowing you anymore after this. Well, they were still you, rough because he's but like. But then you get them home. Well, yeah. Then the whole time I'm thinking, I am a little boy, little boy that now has to go home and tell my dad that his other son died is dead, to bring him this trying chair. to save him. Right. God, that's rough. Yeah. And then and then they have that cinematic at the end where the dad just like 
breaks down. Yeah. So on the hill? Right before, yeah, <laughs> that was rough. Yeah. And then the little brother is strong, but I had, this is my one time. stick with that game. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's so you you get back to the island. It's raining. It's night. You Apparently, the hippogriff couldn't be bothered to take you all the way to the house, so he drops you at the foot of the mountain. <laughs> yeah. And well, you have maybe, to work your way around. You, you, you need maybe that, it was that a landing zone though. thing. You I don't that know. Kind of like I could see it about coming being... Coming home thing. Well, a yeah. little bit. Um, for one, um, maybe the hippogriff was worried that that asshole bully villager from the beginning that wouldn't even let you through when you're like, I need to save my dad, and he's like, nah. That ha, ha, was a jerk. I had, who turns out is scared of little dogs. Uh, you know, I could, so I could see, like, maybe he was like, look, I don't want these people, like, shooting arrows at me, so I'm going to drop you off close, but not like... You know, I, I'd say, uh, I never read it, but isn't Return of the King, isn't the last half of that book about Frodo and Sam going home? Yeah, yeah. well, because then they, um, then, yeah, they go home and they, like, have to, like, fix the Shire, right? It's almost like mini after story. Yeah, they come home. I don't home think there was much of that, though. It, it wasn't, like it half, wasn't, it wasn't though. half, but it was, it was actually a surprisingly long denouement. I think a lot of that was, or, a well, lot of it is more drawn from the Cimmerillion than they... They could have turned it into half a movie, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, I'm, I don't think they won't. Just half? Any day now. A trilogy? Them walking home. Yeah. yeah, the epilogue movie that's they've got um, waiting in the wings. It is always thinking about those massive adventures, though. It's like... It's like, okay, he Gotta is going to do all this stuff. Now how are they going to get home? And it's like, they just need some kind of vector to get back really There's, quickly. There was one really important gameplay element of that last. Well, that's what I was getting there, to. Well, two, of, two, two me- important things. messed it up for me a little bit there. Oh, really? Well, because, okay. So you get you get landed at the bottom. You go around. You get to water. Because, again, you're the little brother. You've watched yep. your mom drown. You've had this issue with water. Scared you don't water. like to swim. You yeah. have this you know, breakthrough where your mom comes in her ghost form, and then you discover you now have the strength. The thing is, so I walk out, and I'm like, oh, okay, I bet I can. I've, I'm spiritually ready to swim now. I walk out in the water. Kid shakes me off. I'm like, okay, maybe a different spot. No. Right trigger? Mm-hmm. He just starts, like, not doing it, not doing it. Like, Okay, well, I'm hitting all the keys. Like maybe were, I need to control it. You were hitting all the... the ones except the one that you needed. Well, no, I was hitting it because I was like, maybe they transitioned to the left trigger because it's like the strength of the brother or something. Yep. Uh, no, he just kept shaking me off, shaking me off. I was like, do I go back? It totally ruined that moment for me because I'm like, what? the control just that, isn't no, that functioning. Is how it... I know, and it eventually did. I don't know if I was just off to the side or something, uh, just there, not in the there right are spot. A couple of funky little bugs, but I actually thought that was really that part, like when you finally mm-hmm. the little brother starts using the left trigger <laughs> and becomes a, and like, becomes a the full controller thing. person. Like, everything got to her. This <laughs> it's everything. like this is a great moment, and all I'm doing is like, or it's like my characters instead of having the spiritual breakthrough, it's like, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, can't. Uh, it's like the invisible uh, wall. Uh, that, that really does ruin it when you get to like an invisible wall in this really intense moment of narrative. And you're like, it's like when you have a bad camera or something like that. Yeah, so, there were, I, had, I had a couple of bugs in this playthrough, like not nothing that was. No, that was too the only off, time. I a had couple a of like little weird things, like when you meet the girl and she goes, "Get in the boat." She was like facing the wrong way. She was like staring like off into the distance, going, "Get in the boat." That's <laughs> this way, and you're like, eh, "Maybe she's blind." Maybe she's blind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so there there are a couple of little bugs, and there were a couple of just like little weird weird bits getting caught up on geography and all that sort of stuff. But nothing that was as severe as that for me. Mm-hmm. I, I, don't I actually have thought any that was like huge. I was like, oh, about the game. I think the only thing is it was in definitely very short. I felt like it didn't have the replayability of say a Limbo, you know, because it's like it's so driven by the story of what happens, you know, and there's big things that happen at the end of the mm-hmm. narrative where it's like you don't necessarily gonna like want to go back and like. You can't get that same first experience again. Whereas Limbo, it's like the puzzles are kind of fun. um, But not having that puzzle-solving aspect of it, you can still have a lot of fun playing Limbo. Yeah. Not so much with Brothers. No, I I would agree with that. Although, um, I think that having the achievements be that sort of like secret off to the side stuff does give it some replayability. I guarantee you're going to have to replay the whole game just to get that parent achievement. I am. And <laughs> also, well, I also, I missed two on, on this last playthrough and because I'm on a new platform, I can get them all again. Yay. Yeah. Uh, I missed, I missed the bird one and I missed, uh, there's one about like watching whales. I sat down on every, Oh yeah. yeah. I, I remembered vaguely that it's like, there's, there's one that you get for sitting on a bench. Mm-hmm. And so I went through the game and I sat on every bench I found, <laughs> except for the one bench that I needed to sit on. And just, but those are really beautiful moments. It's worth it you to sit, sit on the benches yeah. and just it shows you these like vistas, either where you're going or where you've just come from, and it's just 
gorgeous. It really gives you a sense of like huge scale for the this journey that they're making, mm -hmm. so which you then again make in twenty seconds people. on a hippogriff. Yeah. In which case, it's like whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's, actually, it's, it's, it's just it's a like small the yard, alley. Yeah. The, the yard <laughs> next door. Yeah, exactly. You walk across a picnic table. <laughs> um, but so overall, I, I would say get it. Uh, yep. If there's any complaint I have about it, it's that maybe it's not the best value. If yeah, it's a little expensive for the three hours. Yeah, but. but it's a great game. Yeah, yeah. Um, and interesting note is, um, the so the game was developed by Starbreeze and published by 505 Games. Earlier this year, Starbreeze sold the IP to 505 Games. I don't know if that means hmm. that 505 Games might be interested in doing more with the IP. Hmm. I'd like to think Does so. Does he have another brother? Uh, maybe his dad remarried. This Tale is called. This is called <laughs> Step Brothers. Step Brothers. <laughs> you have to play on like a PS4 controller. You're like a 13 year old just dragging an infant around. By <laughs> <laughs> um, so who knows? I'd, I'd actually like to see more of this. Or even failing that, I would actually like to see um, this game make an appearance on PS4 and Xbox One, so that more Next people gen. can experience mm -hmm. it. You know, when we talked about playing this game, I was worried it was on Xbox One because I was thinking, is this now my generation of gaming where I'm just gonna be replaying a bunch of games I played on 360 for the achievements? Because I've actually been doing that. I feel like a lot on the Xbox One lately. Yeah, no, that's a big thing lately. Well, I mean, that's been a Nintendo staple for years. So I mean, it's literally the same games though. It's like yeah. I can replay all the Telltale Walking Dead games if I wanted to at this point, you know, or the Borderlands games or Limbo, you know. We're getting a lot of that. A lot of those continuing series, they I think they'd like to port them over just because they want to make more of those games. But they also a lot of people have gotten rid of the older gen console or yeah. traded it in to move up to the next mm -hmm. one. So I like Borderlands solution for that too. They couldn't mm -hmm. get their their uh, character transfer thing working very well. So if you just had it, if you had played it before on a previous platform, they just gave you seventy five golden keys. <laughs> so that's like, like you right. have all the guns you can have. Yeah, pretty much. It's like open open it like three times a level basically, and you're good. Yeah. All right, should we all determine right. next week's game? Let's do oh. it. All, All right. right, we need the bring in the what is it? The select wheel of cylinder select of selection. Cylind yeah, the whimsical, the, the golden shape. god known as the cylinder of selection. Here it comes. Can you feel it? It's right on the dun, back dun, of a dun, snail. Dun, dun. We need a theme song for this thing. Oh. <laughs> it's like coming in first. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're running out of room. All right, who wants to do it? We'll, we'll put it in post. Uh, <laughs> go right. Okay. Uh, I already did it. Somebody else do it. Oh, I'll do it. All right. Yeah. Okay. Look, because I know there's a handle. There is it. There's yeah. also only like you two can... or three things in there. There's no, there's more. We've gotten a few more. Get the one that's stuck to the top. I like the squeak. We should make that louder. That's a theme song. Hold on. What's this one? This one is. This is a fan suggestion, Child of Light. Oh, yeah. Child of Light. That's a good one. Actually, free right now on Xbox One. I have I not played that yet either. I haven't either. So, and I've, I've heard nothing it. but good things about it, so I'm looking forward to playing that. All right, so All right, cool. uh, next week will be Child of Light. Thumbs up to Brothers from everybody. Thumbs, Thumbs up, up to Brothers. brothers. Yeah, Absolutely. I really like Brothers a lot. Like I said, it was uh, you know, my pick for Game of the Year, the year that it came out. But unfortunately, we gave that to Blood Dragon, which I think was also a it's great not, game. It's not unfortunately, just, you know. Yeah. Also fortunately. Yeah, we want to help out those like those like independent franchises like Far Cry. We want to help those out. <laughs> there we go. We retroactively grant it second place. There we go. <laughs> All right, so join us next week. Uh, we'll be playing Child of Light. Um, and talking about that, so finish it before next week. Bye. See you then. Bye. What if Payday was the unofficial sequel to Brothers? Spirit. That'd be awesome.